imagine charging across Asia, conquering everything in sight, laying waste to cities that resist you and building up a great empire. This is what Alexander the Great was able to do 2,300 and some years ago. Moving out from Greece, he conquered as far as India, set up a kingdom in Afghanistan. It was an amazing achievement, but it really didn't survive him. The moment Alexander the Great died, it evaporated. It fell apart. They simply could not maintain an empire that large. But just 300 years later, something interesting happened in the world. Between Rome and Parthia, the Mughal Empire of India, and the Han Dynasty of China, these four empires had as much as three quarters of the planet's population in just four empires that were centralized, able to function as, well, they each lasted at least a few hundred years. Now, it's not as though there weren't people living in Africa or the Americas at that time, but Eurasian area with a temperate zone just lends itself to a much larger population. And indeed, this is where this great centralization, the development of empires that really could not exist in their permanent state a few hundred years earlier happened. What changed? Well, there was a lot of road building. There was a lot of uh, learning about writing, and a lot more horses were brought in. How do those things make it possible? Well, if you look at how each of these empires was set up, they were strongly centralized, yes, but they were also distributed. The best example is actually found in the Parthian Empire, uh, which inherited the Persian uh, empire, and the system of satrapies, or provinces, where you had a tremendous amount of local control over culture and tax raising and de general development, but a an auditor that came in from the capital. The Pur Persian bureaucracy was set up in a fairly rigid way, where the skills that were needed to keep it were taught on a constant basis, and you had this give and a take between top-down and bottom-up organization. In fact, the area that we would know as Iran today uh, was conquered many, many times in the last 2,000 years. It's not good to be in the middle, uh, but the bureaucracy had a tendency to survive even dramatic shifts between cultures that conquered it, the Turks, the Arabs, the Mongols, etc., etc., etc. This is what happened 2,000 years ago, a tremendous development, the ability to create empires. What was so important about this? Well, for one thing, you take a series of small warring states where there are local conflicts going on, and resources can only be shared on a local basis, and you bring it out to a larger empire. Suddenly you have the ability, at least, to develop systems that can feed large populations, that can allow people to specialize. You don't have to have as much of a warrior class, and you can trade between each part of the empire. The development of these roads and riding and horses and all of the different things made it possible to have a connected world that shared an economy of a kind. Now, it's not as though roads were unknown a few hundred years earlier or writing was unknown. They became more popular, more regulated, and they were connected together into one big thing that created a system. The peace and stability of this world opened up the Silk Road. Rome and Han China certainly knew of each other. Rome had silk, for example. And it wasn't just material goods that went back and forth through this. I mean, Christianity, as we know it, only really came to be a world religion because of the network of Roman roads that they were able to travel. And indeed, my argument is that Christianity itself was influenced by the bringing together of many different things. Buddhism also traveled the roads of the East and was able to spread. 
we could talk about religion separately, but along with all of these various ideas and technologies and ways of doing things, there was just a general feeling among the people that life was getting better. Was life really good in Rome? <laughs> Look, I'm descended from barbarians, Celtic and Germanic people who uh, got their butts kicked by Rome. We were barbarians. Okay, You can just see the way I go on, bar, 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 bar. But in general, the peace of Rome, Pax Romana, or the peace of the Han Dynasty, was a general benefit to the development, the progress of life in terms of te the technologies that were developed and spread and more importantly connected together that made empire possible in the first place but also made it possible to what feed large portions of the population i mean from this time forward china has always been at least 20 percent of the planet's population on only about six percent of the land along the coast it takes tremendous systems to irrigate the land, plant the crops, harvest them, distribute them, etc., etc., etc. Those systems are necessary. And there's a degree of centralization that has to take place. Ah, yes, but empires do not last, do they? That which is united must fall apart. That which is in chaos must come together. It's the, the cycle of history. And while there are benefits to great systems, eventually they become rigid and exclusive. I mean, what indeed is the difference? It's important to note that the development of systems is a critical step in the development uh, or the realization of technology for a better life. It doesn't always make a better life. I mean, technology or the skills that are necessary to do something don't necessarily make a better life for everybody. I mean, there was a great peace in Rome. There was also tremendous death and enslavement. It kind of went both ways. But the systems that brought together all of the various technologies that made it possible to have larger communities, larger economies, were critical to the process. The development of concrete, you could allow aqueducts to be built using the Roman example. Or the development of complex agricultural systems in China. Again, it fed the population. Technology itself continues throughout history to be a double-edged sword. It can benefit the people. It can benefit those who enslave the people. It goes both ways. But what we do know is that systems themselves are about a process of connecting various pieces, bringing them together. And the systems are useful to the extent that they make connections, that they allow specialization to occur. The systems are not useful to the extent that they become exclusive or corrupt or, well, unable to respond to outside threats. Empires do rise and fall. There is always a push and a pull between top-down and bottom-up. There is a time and a place for everything. And within a good system, like, say, the, the Persian satrapies, or for that matter, the Roman legions, there's always a, a give and a take between top-down and bottom-up that makes them more stable. And yet, with time, those forces go back and forth. What matters the most is how the systems are set up to increase connection between people, between ideas, between skills, between various different things that make our world better. It kind of begs the question, what is progress in the first place? I mean, was Rome really a great step forward in terms of progress? It was a necessary one, for better or for worse. It had to happen. And it did happen. Would I like to live in Rome? My people suffered terribly. But it brought everything forward to some extent. What Rome did, more than anything else, was take the bits and pieces of technologies and ideas, the remnants of Greek culture, 
the remnants of Etruscan culture, and, well, the ability to use cavalry uh, by my Celtic ancestors and put them together into coherent systems that made, for a time anyway, a stable empire that connected the world. Systems are useful to the extent they make connection. And it's connection itself that I want to talk about next. But when we look at progress in the world, it always takes some kind of systematized method of developing and going forward and making use of what? New skills, new things, whatever. Could be for good, could be for bad. But in all cases, it takes a system to turn a skill into something that changes the world. There were many, many steps along the way where the world changed, the Renaissance, the Industrial Revolution. But one that we don't talk about very often was the development of empire 2,000 years ago. Before that, large empires just didn't exist. And then they did. Because the methods, the skills, the techniques for developing those large systems were all connected together. And then the world itself was connected. What does it mean to be truly connected? That's what we want to talk about next. Thank you.